There you go. Hey, Chris. What's up, buddy? Awesome, man. Just chilling, man. Glad to talk to you, brother. You too. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I just, you know, feel alone. You know, not not alone, but just no one to really talk to about the Lord. And you know, every the only person that I ever had that I was even able to have these conversations with was my grandmother, who passed two years ago. And uh, I always knew she was real. Uh, I always knew the Lord was with her real heavy. And, uh, you know, uh, I was always, you know, I had both hips replaced and I was placed on, uh, you know, every type of opiate that you could think of to methadone, to suboxone, to every opiate you could think of, like 300 and something pills a month for years. And uh, as I was trying to get off of those, uh, doctors were never trying to get me off. They'd see you for two seconds, write a script and, uh, you know, send you on your way. And, uh, I, uh, I just was always, I always stayed in prayer cause I always knew, I always knew I had, I always knew the Lord was with me as a kid, even through all the crap and just things that I had to deal with as a kid. And, uh, but Everything that's how the Lord's impacted me in the last, uh, the end of 2012, beginning of 2013, uh, the last opiate I was on was methadone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was smoking weed real heavy, you know, um, on the strongest crap you could find, plus oils and waxes and just, just everything. And then two packs of cigarettes a day. And all of a sudden, the, the end of 2012, I just it was three days after I just picked up a new script. And I just, I, I didn't want it no more. I didn't want it. I, I never wanted it. And the doctors had said, because I knew that, I, 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 sorry, there's just so much. Um, I went to the last time I went to the doctor, I said, look, it was six months after my last hip replacement, my second hip replacement. And I said, look, doc, I don't think I have the pain anymore. The only pain that I have is when I don't take these meds. I said, is there a place that I could go in and detox somewhere? And, you know, because I can't go through this in front of my wife and my kids. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. And he said, uh, that my insurance wouldn't pay for it. And he said that, uh, he said my insurance wouldn't pay for it and that I wasn't bad enough. And I said, I'm not bad enough and I don't look bad enough because I'm on the meds right now. And anyways, he put me on the Suboxone and then it was just a war ever since then. And then the last one was methadone and it was the end of 2012. And I was just, I was getting in more deeper prayer than I have ever in my whole life. And, uh, I just, I just said, Lord, you know, tomorrow, man, I'm, I'm not going to take these meds and I didn't flush them. I flushed them before, but I didn't want to flush them and they go, you know, into the earth. So I just, I just filled the methadone bottle up full of water and I put it in two plastic cups and I froze it. And, uh, I just kept being in deep prayer, deep prayer. Then the next morning it was like my breath was under control. I had a sense of calmness and comfort that I've never, ever, ever, or ever had before. And, uh, as I, as as I kept praying and I was like 270 pounds eating garbage, all I wanted was like soups and veggies and fruit. And, uh, I wasn't sleeping as much, but I felt energized off of just five hours, six hours of sleep. And all of a sudden, uh, I was praying in my room and, uh, all of a sudden, brother, it was the most amazing thing. I still think of and, and, and wonder how and why, uh, as I was praying, it was like the sun, it was like, it was literally like the sun was in my bedroom right? and it startled me. It startled me. And I just, I, I just started, you know, I got into the shower and I just, uh, I was still calm and, and things like that. And I was just, I was, oh, I was in deep prayer from there on out. And one night at around 11 o'clock at night, uh, 
I was moved to go get my grandmother in Arizona. So uh, I told my wife, I said, I got to go get grandma. She's like, it's like 11 30 at night and you look tired. I said, I'm not tired. I'm good. Like, I'm just going to go get grandma. So I called my grandmother. I said, grandma, I'm going to come get you. I, she's like, all right, boy. So I go out there. I get there. Everything's all comfort. Everything was all comfort as I got into her house. And as soon as I got in, she goes, hey, boy, sit down over there. So I sat down and she took her glasses off and she goes, son, I want you to know that the Lord's called me home. Mm-hmm. And it's my turn to go. And when we've talked about this in the past, I would get hysterical, you know, because she just means means everything to me. She did. And uh and uh so I kind of changed the subject and you know, I was tearing up, but something came over me to let me know that it was all right. So continue other conversations and then I go to bed and as I go to bed I wake up and I'm in deep prayer again and uh her bathtub was full of water so I, I, I'm in prayer all of a sudden I'm I get into the water and I lay down like this and I stayed underneath there and I was like in such deep prayer and as I came up it, it was a euphoria that I could not that I can't even explain Mm-hmm. After that, I got out. I, I sat on commode, and she has her window was open, and the sun was just beating through there, and I was just in prayer. And I went outside of her house, and all of a sudden, I started like walking around her property like three times this way, four times this, seven times, like all these different numbers. And I was just looking directly into the sun, just praying and praying and praying, and then all of a sudden. I just like went back in her house and she's like, boy, you better get us some oatmeal and cook us some breakfast. I cooked her some breakfast. We came home two days later. My wife came home at night. She was and and she didn't look like she was going to pass. She she was absolutely coherent. She looked like she had plenty of time left. So but two days later, once we got home. Uh, my mother came over with my aunt and said, hey, mom, we're going to come get you to get your hair done and to get you a, a massage. So she looked really bad this day, like really wore out. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with you guys. So we get down to this place and uh, she, we bring her in this place and she looks at the bed and she goes, oh no, I can't get down there because I'm not going to be able to get back up once I do. So, and then all of a sudden she goes, oh, oh, her, my spine, my spine. Cause she ended up getting real big her last days cause she had arthritis but she wasn't able to take the meds that they give you because she was definitely allergic to them. So she, you know, pretty much suffered the last five, six, seven years. So I knew what time it was. And I was like, Oh man. And I just started tearing up. I called the ambulance. They came and got her, brought her to the hospital. I was there every morning. And then all of a sudden I was moved one, the second day she was in the hospital get down to the hospital. So I'm flying on the freeway. My back tire blows out. I get out and I never thought I was going to be able to run again because of replacements and the pain that I've, I still have, uh, you know, from the hip replacement, but I'm booking it. I'm booking it to the hospital. I, I, I say a prayer. I'm, I'm praying the whole way, but I say a prayer before I get into this hospital, I get up to the hospital and 30 minutes later, she goes into a full blown heart attack in front of me. Her body just boom, 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 just blown heart attack. The next day after that, my mother, because I've went through withdrawals before, I've kicked 27 days straight in the first excruciating pain. It was horrible. So I know what these withdrawals are like, but my mother, she goes, Jay, you know what's happened before, you know, let's just take you to the doctor and get your vitals checked and just things like that. And I said, Ma, I'm good. I don't need meds no more. I need nothing. And I didn't even need cigarettes. Like, I, I was free from everything. And uh, even my grandmother going through that, I still didn't pick up cigarettes. So as I go to this hospital, I go to the Summerlin Hospital, and uh, they check my thyroid because I've had an overactive thyroid since the age of 11 and things like that. And 
I, I dropped from like 270 pounds to like 205 pounds, like within a few weeks. And, uh, but I, I felt wonderful. I felt good. Nothing was wrong. But as soon as, and I was telling everyone about Jesus Christ, I'm letting everyone know how wonderful he is and, and what he's done and, and just everything that's happened in my life. Well, when I was with this doctor, I had felt like, uh, I woke up in the hospital. Like I felt like I came out of a sleep. So as I wake up, this man's talking to me. He's got this clipboard in his hand and I'm letting him know about the Lord and I'm letting him know about all the things that he's done for me and, and just things like that. And he thought I was crazy. So he ended up putting me on a medical hold there for three days and they started pumping me up full of just all kinds of meds again. Right. And I'm le like telling them, I, I need to be with my grandmother. I don't need these meds. My grandmother's dying. I'm fine. Like, I just need to get out of here. Well, they held me there for three days and then brought me to a mental institution uh, after that three days. Well, right, I get to the mental institution around like four in the morning. They automatically give me a cup full of antipsychotics and antidepressants and kept me there for oh, almost almost a month and they were shooting me up with halidon i'm just letting them know about how amazing the lord is and just just all these things and uh they just it, i i felt just no matter what i was gonna say to these people and i was just giving them giving them my heart but i just felt that they didn't care about anything that i said they were just gonna do what they felt they wanted to do and just shooting me up with all this crap and uh, putting me on all these meds, like 15 different meds within a few weeks. Uh, so then I picked up the cigarettes when I was in there. I picked them up about a week, a week and a half, two weeks when I was in this hospital. And uh, I finally get out. I get out. I get released the day of my grandmother's funeral. and But I'm on all these meds. And... Uh, I tried stopping them for like a day or two and it would just feel so dark. It, it just, it felt horrible. So now I'm on these meds all the way up until last July. And, uh, I, I ended up, I had to taper off the opiates before my past because the doctors weren't doing it. So I got on the computer and looked at people's forums because if you take, if you stop taking a lot of that med at one time, you're going to go through withdrawals. And I couldn't really go through all that with how busy it is in the house with the family and the kids. I have four children and a wife. And uh, so I had to taper very slowly. So last uh, June, I, I, I was just in deep prayer, even though as dark as it was and as, as many times as suicide I was thinking of. And I just felt all these doctors, they, they, they weren't helping like they it wasn't. So I just stopped going to the doctors and I just began in deep prayer again. No matter how dark it was, it, it, it was just horrible. So I just kept praying and praying. So June, it got to me and I said, you know what? I'm going to taper off of these things as low as I could get and then I'm going to cold turkey it. Cold turkey it. Mm -hmm. So I did that and I got down to like 10 milligrams of the last crap that they put me on. And on in July, I I just I cut it out and I was weak. I mean, I've you know, I'm not boasting or nothing, but just to show some of the sh I've had with, you know, lifting 400 pounds before to at this point, I couldn't lift. No, I couldn't even do a push up, brother. I was so weak and so done. Mm -hmm. But I just I, I just just kept fighting through it through it. I cold turkeyed it. I started the fruits and veggies again. I went to the gym, and even if I could barely lift anything, I just lived, did little by little, and I felt like everyone was looking at me in this place. Like, I didn't even belong, but I just kept doing it. And as I kept doing it, I thought everything that happened in the beginning of 2013, end of 2012, I thought that was just going to be a thing of the past, and I just, I, 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 I couldn't stand that was taking that away from me with these drugs. So now this this beginning of October, all these things with the Lord has came come back. Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, as all these were happening, 
I never went to like churches before or nothing like this. this was just praying. This was just my own communication. So now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get a Bible. So in December, this last December or end of November, I ended up going to get a as I started looking into the Bible and reading things, it, 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 it overwhelmed me because I knew what I was reading was absolute truth. And I was just, I was just like, Oh my goodness. I just was like letting everybody know my mom, my dad, my wife, my, every, everyone around me. And they could, a lot of them would get like offensive and would start cursing and stuff like that. And, 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 and all these things I was done with, because I used to have the worst mouth in the freaking world, you know, mm-hmm. but I, 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 I just was talking to them and, and no one understood. And the conversations like friends, I, I would even try to go out and friends that old friends that were still heavy in sin, I need to go to the Lord, you just need to pray, to, just just pray and just give them your time and do this every day and just watch where that happens, man, and, and just like know this. Well, I felt like every time I would, I would get these things, I was going out and everyone was sucking what little bit of goodness I had and then it would just bring me back down again. So I'm like, man, do I not need to be out there? And now in this, like, I just felt that maybe I need to just get strong and get all the way right myself and then be able to, you know, help in ways that I can. Right. So all of a sudden it was my son's birthday and, and I go to a friend's house and she ended up coming to the Lord. And she goes, Jason, I need to let you know something right now. You need to go to Ephesians 5, 7 through 9, where it says you once were, you know, full of darkness and now you are the light and pretty much you need to stay away from A darkness you, you gotta stay from it no matter how bad you want to help right now you just need to stay from it right now and that was just confirmation i was just like wow so it's just been amazing so i told you about i ended up started to go to churches like the last few months or last few months i, was, I wanted to go to churches because everything i was reading and everything that i was going through i'm like oh my goodness i need to find other brothers and sisters that are going through these things just to be able to talk and just have someone to talk to and have conversation with because anyone else I have no conversation with them. Like, I don't feel that it's just weird. So I ended up going to all these churches. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to all these people that have all these, you know, high degrees and stuff like that. And I'm just like, man, it's like they were coming so close, but then it would just, it would just fall off. And then things that I would say, it was just over their head. And I was just like, wow, I don't really feel you know because not speaking on everyone in the city but where i went i feel it alone like in reality with uh, you know people so i just you know things were just getting frustrated and then i picked up the signals i was going like three weeks without them and then i, I i'd be good and then i uh you know, and then I started looking on the computer because I couldn't anyone else, you know, out here. So I got on the computer. I found you, and I'm like, man, this dude is doing nothing but the truth. And there was a few others that I had seen, and I'm like, man, there's truth out there. The Lord is working real heavy. And but out of everything you look online, there's only wow, like the Lord is that precious, and everyone should be representing Him and go going to him and, and, and doing these things, but I don't see too many, you know, out there doing it. And I'm just, I just, that's where I felt, you know, lost, like, man, I just wish there was other folks, you know, to be able to, you know, work with together or, or, or whatever, you know? And so I just kept going back to the cigarettes, man. I, I get bored. I just get, you know, not really have, I don't have come you know, communication with, with a lot of people because communication that they want to have is something that I no longer am about or right. just, it, it just not for me. All right. Well, all that's normal. All of, every single bit of it's normal. It all happened to me. It all happened to other people. I just want to testify in Jesus Christ's 
beautiful, holy, precious, perfect name, what he's done for me. I was in the streets. I ran with one of the most notorious crip gangs in America. I've robbed. I've gotten in shootouts with people. I'm on probation now for shooting somebody. I've sold drugs. I've done everything that you could possibly imagine on that other side. And all I could tell everybody is that messing with that other side, you will be walked to an early demise when it was never your time. And I just pray that you all see Jesus Christ because the wonderful things that he's done for me in my life, I wish and pray for everybody to have. And I just... There's so much, and I just pray, and I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, Father God Almighty, I thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for saving me from death and all the horrific things that could have happened, and I just say thank you, Jesus, in your wonderful, holy, precious, beautiful name, amen. Amen. That's a powerful testimony, amen. I thank God for your conversion. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. I thank God for you, brother. I thank God for, for you, too. For having the courage and compassion that you have. Well, that's what we get in the Lord, right? All the beautiful things, all the wonderful things, not just them, but all the wonderful things. Nothing good, nothing good is outside God, you know? All good things that's come from God, and all... Anything that's no good, it's not coming from him. It's coming from Lucifer. Absolutely, you know? brother. You're you're a glory to God. Your life is a glory to God. Shine. You know, Jesus said, "Don't when that you, when he, that candle's lit, you don't slide it under the bed. You put it up on the on the <laughs> mantle, right?" That's right. <laughs> and then he 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 saves people that are going to do that. He saves people that won't shut up. That ha that happened. <laughs> He say he he saves people that y you're not going to be silent, you know, because that's what he's looking. He's looking. For, that was like me. I got fired from my job. My family called me crazy. I had a job. Uh, well, I had my own company for a long time over in Jersey. Now I'm in Austin, Texas. But when I was in Jersey, I had a uh, I worked for a company right before I got saved. They told me to stop talking about the Lord and demons and the, the truth of God. And I'd be like, all right, I'd be like, all right. And then I'd get on the next job site. And the second someone sinned, I'd be like, you better not do that. And so, you know, that, that's, I and I, I left my fiance. She didn't want to come to the Lord. And I just left everybody. I bought a van and then I traveled around the country and I prayed for people. That's mm -hmm. beautiful, man. My mm -hmm. grandfather was actually from Tyler, Texas. Oh yeah. Yeah, my 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 dad is from Texas as well. It's beautiful out there, man. I used to visit as a kid. Yeah, it is nice here. Cool. Yeah, I was just where you are. You're in Vegas. Oh man, that heat's coming already. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's coming here too. It's a little. It, this is right on the border of the dry. I'm in Austin on the border of the dry area. Oh okay. But uh, I was uh, I was in the desert fasting in Vegas, well near Vegas in the Mojave Preserve. Oh, okay. And uh, every few weeks I would go to that uh, go to Prim and shower at the Pilot, and then I'd go right back into the desert. But uh, that, wow. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I'm, That's awesome, man. Yeah, I lost. I was two hundred fifty pounds too. Or I was 250 pounds when I got saved, and now, and when I got done fasting, I was 150. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, I lost a little, but I, I put, I already put back like 20, most of it's water weight and, you know, just tissue. So it, it, right. came, it came right back on. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, let me That's know if you cool, need man. me. Let, let me know if you need me. I'll be here, okay? All right, brother. I thank you so much, man. Thank Praise you. Praise the Lord, man. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Talk to you yes, later. Yes, sir. All right, brother. God bless. Have a blessed day. You too. Bye -bye.